All right, time for the results. We got the trusted tape measure. Seabum just snagged his fifth consecutive Mr. Olympia title, but the real secret to his success might just be the fact that his coach, Hanny Rambod, uses a training method so unique, it's basically the unicorn of bodybuilding, FST7. Literally anyone he coaches seems to blow up like a helium balloon. But here's the million dollar question. Could a mere month of FST training the all natural way blow up your arms? Or is the secret sauce in his client's world-class genetics what makes FST training so effective. Time to find out. So about to start the day one arm workout. Let's see where the arms are at. Get an exact measurement here. So right arm, no pump with the flex. And we are 16 and a half inches. When I started lifting, I wanted big arms more than anything. But being a naturally skinny guy with really long arms made it so much more difficult. To make matters worse, the internet has reminded me for years that my arms are small. I'm so determined to build big arms regardless of how shitty my genetics may be. And I chose FST7 training this month to grow my arms because if literally all the guys in the world with the best physiques are utilizing it, what better strategy to start at than what the guys at the top are doing? So FST7 training promises to dramatically change both the size and shape of your muscles. But what in the hell is it? Well, let me drive out to the desert in the middle of nowhere to explain it to you guys because I don't want everyone else in my gym getting bigger than me. So I want you to think of FST7 or fascia stretch training as like stretching a rubber band to its limits, but your muscles are that rubber band. And the more you stretch it to its limits, the more healthy micro trauma it causes in the muscle. So think of it like this, FST7 equals more stress. More stress equals more muscle damage and more muscle damage equals more gains given adequate rest and recovery. All right, so here's what a 32 set arm workout looks like. Seabum always starts his arm workouts with his tricep rope press down to warm up what he calls his old man elbows. And the biggest change I felt in this first arm workout compared to what I normally do is without a doubt the trend pump. Now I'd never taken trend before today, but I went on the dark web and got me some so I can be just like Seabum and it felt like the incredible Hulk and his entire family was living inside my arms and trying to escape. Just kidding guys, that was a bad joke. And I wanna make it abundantly clear I'm doing this 30-day FST7 arm experiment, not on any PEDs, just a lot of hard work and eating in a calorie surplus. So we made it to the grand finale, the FST7 finisher. Now, I really didn't like this tricep exercise all that much, so I'll probably switch it out in some future workouts, but I really love the biceps FST7 finisher. By the end when I was flexing, my biceps just felt super pumped and also in excruciating pain. One arm work workout down and seven more to go, but I definitely felt a difference in the first FST7 workout. I woke up and I have this like pain right here. It's like in my brachialis. I don't know if it's like a strain, hopefully it's not, or just some kind of knot, but I'm gonna go visit Adam, my local PT, and figure it out. Literally day three and I'm already hurt. I don't even remember when it exactly happened. I just woke up the next day and my arm was really sore. So like when I'm stretching out, I'm forcing this things to release and then also when you stick the needle in there It'll give that and to be honest, I don't know how in the hell I'm gonna finish this challenge, but Adam is a wizard with this stuff and hooked me up to this torture device called electromagnetic dry needling. So he was actually able to find the exact knot and we attempted to get it nice and loose so I can finish the arm training challenge. So Adam got the knot out, arm is still a little bit sore, and I was thinking about my why, on why I wanted to do this challenge. And it reminded me of the scene in The Last Dance, the Michael Jordan documentary on Netflix. And there was something he said that really reminded me of how I've always been wired. And he would use every little bit of negativity, any comment about him to fuel his motivation. And I've always been the same way. I use comments, hating on my physique, calling my arms small. I remember when I first wanted to start my own company, people would make fun of me, they'd tell me I'd fail, I use that as motivation. And my biggest pro tip is use negativity to fuel your motivation. It's so much more productive than letting it tear you apart and lose confidence in yourself. So what I'm doing since these arm workouts have a ton of volume and are really intense is I'm doing two FST7 arm workouts a week for the entire month. So essentially we're going to see how much my arms grow in 30 days from only eight FST7 arm workouts. Now this workout was way more focused on biceps than triceps. We 
get preacher curls nice and heavy, super slow eccentric on the last rep, made this one killer. Then we did my new favorite type of curls. Notice how I'm doing one arm at a time versus alternating. Now, this little tweak makes this exercise so much harder and really increase the pump. I highly recommend it to you guys. Then we wrapped it all up with FST7 cable curls. Notice how I'm curling with my elbow behind my body, which creates more stress on the long head and the bicep, AKA that bicep peak. All right, guys, when you're trying to make gains fast, you gotta treat your body like a luxury car. You gotta think of your body like a Lamborghini and not a Ford Taurus. So let me show you a little pro tip. Now, from my experience, the more jacked the animal, the more gains you're gonna make from it. So the first choice today is bison. I mean, look at that physique. Incredible shoulder development, huge chest and back, boom. Now, nature's most shredded beast, the deer. Venison meat is 95%. This stuff is actually really high quality source of protein. Protein. And last but not least, we got 93% grass-fed beef. Let the gains continue. All right, so you're probably sitting there scratching your head thinking, is this guy only doing arm workouts for 30 days? Well, the short and sweet answer is no, but that does not mean I'm not prioritizing arms over everything else. Like guys, your workout plan should be like a finely tailored suit. It needs to fit your goals like a glove. That's why you can't just grab a random push-pull legs routine and hope for the best because what are you really trying to accomplish here? So right now, I'm all about giving my arms the VIP treatment, which means two glorious arm workouts each week because those bad boys need some serious volume loving. But don't worry, the rest of the week is like a buffet of workouts. I've got two upper body days where I'm pushing and pulling my way to greatness and I got two leg days to remind my lower half that it is not forgotten. It's like a workout menu and arms just happen to be today's special. Hey, you're all set today. Thank you. Thank you. should be sponsored by Krispy Kreme. So we are balls deep in our fourth FST7 arm workout, and I've got to admit, it's like having dessert before the main course. Lifting heavy, then savoring an intense pump like it's the last slice of pizza at a party. And the best part, FST7 is a wild card you can throw into almost any muscle group. Hanny, being the maverick he is, skips the compound exercise for the grand finale and typically does a shaper. So for our arm workout, I'm basically doing my best hulk compression with the heavy lifting, flexing those biceps always in the six to 10 rep range. But then when it comes to the FST7 finisher, we throw in lighter weights. But don't get me wrong, we're not lightening the load because we're on a mission to make it easy. We're lightening the weight so we can power through seven sets of 12 reps with flexing in between and very short rest times between sets. But let me tell you, this is far from a cakewalk. In fact, this should be the hardest part of your workout if you do it right. Another day, another donut. Thank you. And that's it's cool, I want to see through. Cheers. Internet. Mm. Mm. No, you got one. Oh, that's fun. Limited edition protein donut. Uh, Krispy Kreme. Guys, arm day is a whole lot like Christmas day, except it doesn't happen once per year. It gets to happen twice per week. I'm having way too much fun on this challenge. We've made it to day 17 and we are speeding towards Gainstown faster than a squirrel on superhuman pre-workout. Now, after more than two weeks of FST7 arm training, the mirror is actually starting to show me some love and my motivation is at an all time high. I feel like I'm actually making gains. The deep arm burn on these workouts is real and I gotta admit it's sometimes painful, but it's all part of the experience. Pressure is a privilege and so is the temporary pain of this style of training. Another FST7 arm workout in the books. It's not a cakewalk, more like a slow crawl to my favorite donut shop, which of course is Krispy Kreme Donuts. Dear Krispy Kreme, thank you for sponsoring my anabolic window during this experiment. Day 22 and we are reaching the final stretch. The crazy arm pump I'm getting from these workouts is so much more than a sensation now. It has officially become my spirit animal. I was literally lying in bed last night just dreaming of that filthy FST7 arm pump. The journey has been incredible and I cannot wait to see the final results. While I may not be so big yet that I have to walk through doors sideways, I feel like I'm starting to see some visual gains in the mirror and I cannot wait to see how much bigger my arms got from this experiment in only 30 days. 
Welcome to day 26, folks, the penultimate workout, which is just a fancy way of saying it is the last workout before the last workout. What's awesome about FST7 is that these workouts are more relentless than a mosquito at a summer barbecue. Every single one has been so intense. Now, even though I was wearing my favorite extra medium t-shirt today, I gotta admit, I felt pretty slow looking at my arms in the mirror of my gym mid FST7 arm pump. Four more days to go until I bust out Trevor, my trusted tape measure, and we all get to see what kind of arm gains I made after 30 days of FST7 arm training. All right, guys, day number 30. See any progress here? Let me know in the comments below. And I really feel like my arms are starting to take on an identity of their own. So I've officially rebranded both my arms to Roger in honor of Roger the Kangaroo, my personal physique idol. Here we are, guys, the final FST7 arm workout. You know, over the last 30 days, I've done eight total FST7 arm workouts, and I definitely have a new appreciation for how the world's best bodybuilders train. Even though I don't feel like my physique hero Roger the Kangaroo yet, this challenge has been incredible and today we are wrapping it all up with a bang. This is it, the grand finale. We're going to give it everything we've got just like Seabum. It's been a crazy ride and I'm grateful for every moment of it. My arms are on fire and I cannot wait to show you guys the final results. All right, time for the results. We got the trusted tape measure, finished my arm workout a couple hours ago, and uh, let's find out how much we grew here. So rocking the Young LA um, Champions Jacket, my company Elfline, one of the sponsors on it, so came in handy on this very cold day in Nevada. And 30 days ago, I stood in the same spot here in my kitchen, and my right arm was 16 and a half inches, my left arm was 16 inches. So let's see if we made any kind of gains here in 30 days. So here we go, no pump. Let's see where we're at. 16 and a half inches is the score to beat. Holy shit. Wow, you guys are not gonna believe these results. We are officially at 17.5 inch arms on the right arm. And before I talk about it, let's get the left arm because the left arm is smaller than the right arm. So we did 16 inches on the left arm 30 days ago. Just so you guys can see I'm not cheating it. We are at 17 and a quarter. Holy shit, that's a lot more improvement than I thought I would make. Now, that is an inch improvement on the right arm and one and one fourth inch improvement on the left arm in only 30 days. And I will remind you, I did this completely natural. I'm not on Seabum's supplement regimen, we'll call it. So there are three big reasons I think I had such impressive results on this challenge. Number one is twice per week training my arms allowed me to dial in my intensity and put all of my workout energy into arm day, as well as putting more volume into my bicep and tricep training. Number two is I made damn sure I was eating in a calorie surplus. I mean, I had the post-workout Krispy Kreme donuts. I was eating 200 to 250 grams of protein per day. And number three, the combination of lifting heavy as well as doing intensity techniques like FST7 was truly a gains changer. Does FST7 training work? I definitely think that it is highly effective. It is a great intensity technique that you can apply to literally any muscle group, but I also think there are a lot of alternatives, including the balloon method, which you can find on this channel, which is very similar to FST7. You're lifting heavy for progressive overload and you're doing lots of intensity techniques that increase the muscle damage like drop sets, supersets and time under tension training. What 30 day fitness challenge should I do next? Feel free to drop me some ideas down below in the comments. And I was just thinking this arm day challenge was way too much fun. What do you guys think if I train my legs like Tom Platts for 30 days?